and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to be looking at a topic that we can find, at least for my class, we, uh, we talk about this in the seventh unit, which is the unit on urban geography. So the topic we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be comparing the ideas of what's called the rank size rule and then the primate city rule. All right, now the reason this particular concept or these two particular concepts are important is because they're a part of the conversation that we have in urban geography when we're talking about what's called uh, the urban hierarchy. Okay, and urban hierarchies are important both on a global scale as a local scale because what we find when we're looking at the uh, when we're looking at the urban hierarchy, uh, the city size of that uh, the size of a city is actually going to be directly related to uh, that particular city's position on the urban hierarchy. So the idea is the larger the city, the higher the spot that's going to be on the urban hierarchy. And this is significant for individuals who live in, uh, live in places because what it tells us is that the larger the city, generally speaking, the higher the order the services are. And so if people want within their space uh, to be able to access particular services that are on the higher end, uh, then they're going to need to be able to have access to uh, urban spaces that are higher on uh, the urban hierarchy. And the lower the population size, the lower it is on the urban hierarchy, and the lower the levels, uh, well, I guess not necessarily the lower the level of service. Uh, large cities all have low level services, but the fewer are the less exclusive, the higher the order services are going to be uh, for those particular individuals. Now, the other thing that it talks to us about, it talks to us about the distribution of population. All right, because if we have uh, people who are relatively evenly spread out, that means we're going to have a fair number of relatively large cities that are in uh, relative close size to each other. But if we don't, that means that our population is not evenly distributed across the space. And along with that, we do not have an even spread of, you know, four pretty important things. Uh, spread of development, spread of economic, cultural, and political influences. And so if uh, we're looking at a, a country that does not have a relatively even spread of that population, what that means is not only is development, but also political, economic, and cultural influences are all congregated uh, in one to a very few numbers of uh, large urban spaces. And so that can definitely have a great impact on individuals who are living in, living in a country. And so that's really what rank size rule as well as primate city rule speak to us about. Uh, countries, generally speaking, we can fit them into one of the two categories, although uh, based upon what I've seen, China maybe is bucking the trend a little bit because uh, China doesn't necessarily seem to cover, uh, doesn't necessarily seem to follow either of those rules. And as far as I've seen, I've not seen any other term that's been developed to describe really what's happening in China, but we're not going to worry about that so much right now. Right now, we are worried mostly about rank size rule, and we're worried about primate city rule as concepts found in human geography. So first, let's talk about the rank size rule, what exactly it is. Okay, so rank size rule is actually a pretty simple mathematical formula that speaks to us about uh, if, a, if a country and its cities follows the rank size rule, then we can determine what the population size of those cities should be based upon the formula and based upon the concept of the rank size rule. Okay, so don't let this be more confusing than it actually is. Sometimes the definition of rank size rule sounds kind of confusing. So really basically, what, what the definition of rank size rule is this, is that if a country follows the rank size rule, then every, country, every city that is smaller than the largest city, the size of that city will be a fraction that is equivalent to its rank on the urban hierarchy. Okay. Now again, that sounds a little bit convoluted, but you know, just, just for sake of example. So let's say that we had a country, country X, country X, largest city had a population of 5 million. Okay. Uh, well, if this country X follows the rank size rule, the second largest country, I'm oh, sorry, the second largest city, its population should be one over the rank of the largest city. So one over the rank, it's one over two. So one half of the size of the largest city. So uh, 5 million divided by 2 is 2.5. Okay. Uh, and then if as we went on down, so the third largest city should be one third, the fourth largest city should be one fourth, so forth and so on. Now, the reason that this is important is because, like I was saying, if a country and its cities follow the rank size rule, then what that means for us 
is that that country has a relatively even distribution of its population. And if it has a relatively even distribution of its population with these urban centers, that means you have a relatively even distribution of development. Now, when, I'm talk when I say development, what I mean is more infrastructural development, access to, uh, you know, uh, access to water in terms of uh, water being piped in, uh, access to you know, consistent electricity, access to, to internet, any of those types of things, um, you know, relatively uh, stable power grids and, and things along those lines. The closer you are to urban centers, uh, and, and the more the greater access you have to those urban centers, the more likely you are to have those things. But not only that, you have a relatively even spread of political, cultural, and economic influences because if you have even distribution of these populations, all those things are just kind of naturally not going to congregate in one space because people tend to congregate around spaces that have political, economic, or cultural influences so they can get access to them, all right? So if a country follows this rank size rule, that really is beneficial to the people of that country because they have access to those things. And so let's look at an example so you can see a real-life example of what uh, this idea of the rank size rule looks like. And so uh, I'm going to pull up some numbers that are used by uh, a website here, and I looked at the sources of it, and um, this particular website is worldpopulationreview.com. Uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like the, the data is, uh, it comes from credible sources. The, the U.S. Uh, city data comes from the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, so if we look at the American cities here, you'll notice that New York is the largest city at 8.5 million. And then the second largest city is Los Angeles, and this is the 2018 population, uh, with a population of about 4 million. But even if you go back to 2016, it's 3.9 million, which is not that far off if you do the calculation. Uh, Chicago is at 2.6, okay? Houston being uh, 2.3, Phoenix at 1.6, almost 1.7. So you'll see there with the American cities, there's it follows the rank size. It's not perfect, and again, as hopefully you've talked about in the class, with models, no model is going to be perfect, uh, but it follows the rank size rule pretty well. And I think uh, for most people who have had experience in the United States, it makes sense. And you see that kind of played out in the United States. Relatively even distribution of population. I mean, obviously not perfectly distributed, but kind of a more even distribution of population. Uh, with these large urban spaces, you have access to development. You have access to economic, political, and cultural uh, activities and influences uh, in and around those urban spaces. Okay, So that's what the rank size rule looks like. Then if we go to the primate city rule, uh, basically what this speaks to us about is if a country has populations of cities where the largest city is more than two times as large, the next largest city. So basically, where we looked at the rank size, uh, the rank size rule, this idea of relatively even distribution uh, within the country, and the primate city rule tells us in that idea of primate, it means that you have one city that kind of sits on top as the most important city. Okay, and so the significance there is pretty much the exact opposite of the, of the rank size rule. The idea being that pretty much all of the influence, all of the prestige, all of the uh, connections that are found within that country are going to be concentrated in that one city. And you can tell it because that's where the people are. And again, the, the population size is kind of your signifier there in terms of how significant uh, a city is. Okay, so the example that we're going to use is France, and so we'll pull up the, the numbers here again. Uh, from the World Population Review uh, website, and they pull their numbers for France from uh, the United Nations. So, uh, you know, we hope we can we hope we can trust it. Okay, and so, you know, I think this is is pretty easy to see. You look at Paris. Paris is uh, 2.1 million, and uh, Marseille is uh, you know not even close. Well, I mean, not even close. It's, you know, uh, 210,000 short of being half. And then Lyon, uh, you know, and I don't know the exact uh, percentages there, but you can, you can see that there's a, a relatively significant gap. Now, you might say between the next largest cities like Marseille, Lyon, so forth and so on, they're relatively close, but uh, Paris is far and away larger than, uh, you know, more than more twice the size of these other cities. And so it lets you know that not only is Paris the more significant city, uh, but also more than likely that is where you're going to find all of those connections that we were talking about earlier. And that means that a lot of the people in France geographically are going to have a hard time having access to all the things uh, that are going to be available there in Paris. And if you want access to them, uh, if you want access to political, cultural, economic influence, you're probably going to have to get yourself to Paris, which makes it a little bit more difficult 
uh, for the people who are trying to uh, trying to get access to those things. So that 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 is one of the reasons why this whole concept is, is pretty significant because it speaks to uh, not only does, not only just speak to urban hierarchy, not only just speak to uh, you know distribution of population, but it's really about people and their ability to access the things that are influential and significant uh, within their country. So there you have it, uh, a comparison between the rank size rule and the primate city rule. Uh, both important in terms of understanding urban hierarchy and the impact of the uh, urban landscape on a country. So I hope you found that helpful. And as always, I hope you